All right, hey folks, so it's part two of the series of how I gained my first 20 pounds of muscle. Today's video is going to be about the routine. Now, the goal of this series is to show you what I did, what I actually did to build that first 20 pounds of muscle. Now, going back to that routine, going back to that period of my life 25 years later, with the benefit of my experience now, having trained for 25 years, coached for 10 years, competed for 18 years, I can look back, look at some of the things that I did right and some of the things I did wrong, and hopefully you guys can gain some benefit from that. That's the idea, okay? So follow along and let's see what we can learn from the way that I put together that routine in the first couple of years. Before we get to that, please do uh, hit like for the algorithm, comment something for the YouTube gods, and if you haven't subscribed, please do. So it helps me out a lot trying to grow the channel. So let's go on to the training split. Now, I said previously I was doing an upper lower. However, there was a bit of variation initially compared to what I did the majority of that first year or so. So initially, I was doing the upper lower with one rotation. So it was upper one, lower one. That's it. Just over and over again. I was training three times a week. So everything was being hit three times every two weeks. It went like this. Upper, lower, upper, lower, upper, lower across the two weeks. And initially, there was just one rotation. So I did bench, chins, seated overhead press with the barbell, squats, deadlifts, and some calf work. That's it. That was my routine. That was the bulk of it. Now, before I could do chins, I did pull downs, but essentially that was it. Initially speaking, I had no interest in doing a second rotation. The reason being, in my mind, I started off that year with the sole goal of hitting three plate bench, four plate squat, five plate deadlift, and all the appropriate lifts for all the reps. And as a result, it did make sense initially to vary the exercise. And I think that's the first big lesson. Because a lot of guys, when they go to the gym, they feel like they need a range of exercises, either because that's just the way it's done. Like I must do chest or with bench press, incline bench, dips, cable crossover. Not because of any real reason, just because that's the way it's done. And I think that's the first mistake, because if you're not lifting very much weight, you can repeat that exercise more often, rather than having a high variety of things, which is going to dilute your efforts. So bear in mind, what is the goal? The goal is not to get a sick pump. The goal is not to hit your body from multiple angles. The goal is not to make sure you get a stretch and a squeeze across the workout. The goal is poundage progression, for moderate to high rep ranges in good consistent form. That's the goal. So if you are repeating the same exercise over and over again, you are more likely to speed to that goal because you're gonna get the benefit of improved motor learning from continuously doing the same exercise over and over again, rather than dilute your efforts with more variety. Your body is only gonna adapt slower. If you can bench twice a week and you can recover from that, that's always gonna deliver faster progress than if you benched one day a week and then did dips the next day. It's just natural because you're asking your body to recover and grow two separate movement patterns. Whereas if you just benched over and over, you're gonna get progress faster as long as you can recover. So in those early stages, that was my only interest, was to just hit the lift over and over again. That was something that I did very right. And it's something which you guys can learn from. If you're able to hit a lift more often and recover from it, do it. You're gonna get faster progress. Now, save the variation or later down the line when you need it. Don't do it because you just feel like it's the thing to do. That's gonna slow down your progress. It's not gonna speed it up. So that's the first thing. The first thing is I made sure I had the highest amount of practice and frequency on the lift that I wanted to improve that I could get away with within the confines of the split that I'd created, which was an upper lower three times a week, okay? Now, moving on. The very first bit of periodization that I ever used was to add in rotations. This was the first thing that I implemented as part of my road down a lifetime of <laughs> overcomplicating things. I say that tongue in cheek because people love to say, keep it simple. And that's generally pretty good advice. And that is my first point, which is I kept it simple and I got better progress. But when there is a need to add complexity to your training, don't be afraid to do it. So the next bit was, me adding my first bit of periodization and that I added in rotations. I kept the split and I added in rotations. 
So I was doing upper one and upper two, things like that. Now, in terms of when I added that in, there was no hard and fast number. It's going to be different for different people. But the rule of thumb that I took was when it got to the point that I was just sick to the stomach of having to do the same lift over and over again, that's when I would change. You can always force yourself through one or two more sessions before you finally break, always. But when I was just absolutely sick to the stomach, progress had grind down to a halt, and I was like, I just do not want to squat and deadlift again this week. That's when I switched things up. Now, practically speaking, that was probably about a, a third of a year into it. Okay, So I progressed very rapidly, just hitting the same thing over and over again. When my progress ground down to a halt and I was just sick and tired, that's when I added in this variation. And initially it was great. It worked fantastically well. That variation just opened up so much more progress. And that's how I know I added it in at the right time because I milked that first bit of progress as much as I could. That extra practice, the extra frequency, it just helped, right? Now, when I was sick of that and progress was dying, I then moved to a schedule where I was still hitting each body part three times every two weeks, but I was hitting each exercise roughly every 10 days. And that opened up a whole new world of progress, which was great. It worked exactly as intended. And again, that's another thing I did very right in those early stages, which you guys can learn from. Added variety, added periodization, added complexity only when necessary. Keep it simple is great advice, but at some point you're going to have to add complexity. So you have to have a balance. Try not to get stuck in these zealous ways. Like we don't want to overcomplicate things for the sake of it. But at the same time, we don't want to just lift like a caveman because at a certain point, you're going to run out of steam. You're going to need to change things. So with all things, try not to get stuck in a camp. Keep it open-minded. Change when you need to, not before. In this example, I'm actually proposing people have less variety, less complexity, and benefit more from that. Only change when you absolutely need to. Keep it simple until you have to change. So what I did was I initiated two rotations for upper body. That was a bench, a row, and a seated dumbbell press. And the other day, it was a seated barbell press and a weighted dip and weighted chin. The lower body days, day one, I split that up into doing a full squat, followed by a rack pull. And the next day, it was a leg press followed by a deadlift. So that's how I split things up. I added in a little bit more variety, and I made sure I added in complementary lifts. Particularly for the bench press, the dip was a great addition to my bench pressing. In the beginning, now when I added in dips, it provided a new growth stimulus. And I particularly remember my upper chest getting a lot of growth from dips, and my triceps were getting a lot of growth too, which was great. Helped my bench press, pushed it up. So they acted as a synergist together. Same with squats and leg presses, extremely helpful for me. Deadlifts and rack pulls, extremely helpful. So all lifts which were complementing each other and building up like almost like a, an orchestra of instruments, just all helping each other make the result. But uh, as I say, I only added that in when it was absolutely necessary. In the beginning, I was getting far faster progress by just repeated exposure to the same exercise over and over again. So yeah. Real simple. Now, at those at that time, I did try two things which didn't work very well at the time. Okay, and these are sensible changes, but at the time they were too much. So, context matters. So, what I'm about to say is these two changes at the time didn't work so well for me, but later in life worked very well. So, the first change I made was to train four days a week. Didn't go so well. I did that when I had two rotations. So essentially what I was doing was every week I was doing a deadlift and a rack pull. Every week I was doing benches and dips. Every week I was doing squats and leg presses. Now for some things, so I briefly went to four days per week. Didn't really like it. Didn't feel I could come into every session as strong as I needed to feel. And I just felt like I wasn't, I was really just not recovering as much as I needed to when I wanted to train super hard, super heavy and really progress. Because again, remember what's important Progressive poundages, moderate high rep ranges in good consistent form. If I wasn't able to come into the session feeling like I was able to deliver that, I pulled it back to three days a week. That's the first thing I tried, which at the time didn't work so well. The second thing I tried was three rotations. And really, I just tried this because I thought my progress is slowing down. Maybe this will speed things up. 
So I specifically remember I did a squat, a leg press, and a front squat. Those are the three rotations. And I also did a rack pull, a deadlift, and a stiff leg deadlift at the time. And that was fine. That approach actually would work very well years later. But at the time, it didn't work so well. I thought it would provide a new influx of, of progress. But actually, it just slowed progress down. So I didn't like it. I didn't like training each lift so infrequently because I was training each lift once every two weeks. And that just wasn't enough for me. So at the time, that was something which didn't work so well. But years later, it actually worked very well. So just something that you guys can learn. And I think the overriding principle, the conclusion, the summary. Keep things simple for as long as you're progressing. And for me, it led to tremendous progress, keeping things simple. But then the flip side of that is, the flip side is over the years, over the last 25 years, I have added in degrees of complexity and periodization as needed to spur on more progress. So when I needed the complexity, it provided a huge burst of progress. So you've got to have a balance. Try not to be in a camp. Try not to be in the keep it simple, stupid camp or the training complexity, science is God camp. Just try and have a balance. Remember, what do I say all the time on this channel? Your only loyalty is to your results. Try not to get into a camp. Yes, it sounds very good when influencer jumps onto YouTube and says, keep it simple, stupid, and everyone loves it, right? Yeah, 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 we get that, we get that. Plenty of people told me that over the years. I kept it simple plenty of times. But the fact of the matter is there's two sides to that coin, so don't get zealous. Keep it simple as much as you need to, and when you need to add complexity to things, add complexity. There's no right or wrong there. It's just do what you need to do to get the result, to get the next rung on the ladder. That's all you need to do. All right, so hopefully you guys found something useful in that, maybe something applicable for your own training. Maybe some of you guys are adding too many rotations. Maybe you need to pull it back. Maybe some of you guys are just really stubborn and you're just keeping it simple. But actually, you need more rotations. You need more complexity. Who knows? It's all contextual. But listen, if you are having trouble figuring that out, hire me as a coach. This is what I do for a living. There is a link in the description below and let me figure it out for you because I can. Folks, I'm going to call it there. I'll see you in part three of how I gained 20 pounds of muscle in my first year of training. Peace.